All right, so we just got off the pond. We have a cooler full of bass and brim, and I'm here to give you an example about how I personally fillet a bass and a bluegill. There's a lot of different ways to fillet fish out here, but here's how we're gonna go through things today. How we start off, of course, the cutting board's nice to have, keeps the tailgate clean or the kitchen counter or the outdoor patio porch. Um, also have a nice small fillet knife. This is a six inch blade. It does good for a lot of bass, less than two pounds, and, and for the most part, brim that are less than 10 inches. Um, it's always good to have a good sharp knife, so I've got a few examples of sharpening uh, uh, tools here. A nice uh, little handheld sharpener has two ceramic sticks, does a good job, and then also a diamond stone. A bowl to put my clean fillets into. A spoon, I'll show you all an example of how to quickly scale a brim with a spoon. And then also a waste bucket down below for the clean uh, carcasses. All right, so this video is going to be a little bit backwards from probably most that you've seen. I want to start off showing you the anatomy of a fish because after all, you have to know what you're trying to miss in terms of making a nice, bone-free, uh, pretty fillet. So the important thing to know with, with these fish, and I'll, I've got a nice filleted fish here already, are, are the bones you're trying to miss. So the, some of the anatomy here, you've got the ribs. If those end up in the fillet, of course, you're going to have a lot of uh, unhappy uh, uh, party guests and dinner guests. They're going to be chomping on bones. What a lot of folks don't mention is these intermuscular bones. There's a fine uh, ridge of bones right here that actually point out directly away from the body of the fish, right on the top of the ribs. If you, if you dismiss these and cut through them, that's going to leave for a lot of little pin bones that can stick you in the mouth and, you know, scratches you're swallowing and things like that. That's why folks don't like to eat improperly filleted fish. The rest of this here, we have the vertebrae coming all the way down. It goes all the way to the end of the tail. Um, there's a nice uh, hard bone here that you can follow. These, the, these, uh, these vertebrae here are actually uh, you know, protecting the spinal cord and you, they're, they're ridged. You can actually feel your knife going over these. Uh, and of course, you've got the body cavity here also. You don't want to have a lot of entrails and things like that punctured or still attached to the fillets once you're actually done filleting them. So you don't want to puncture the body cavity. You want to leave the ribs, you want to definitely go around your intermuscular bones and just carefully guide your knife along the skeletal system. And then ultimately you'll end up with these nice uh, skin fillets here with the skin and scales left over on a bass. Alright, so we'll begin with filleting a bass. Like I say, pull your, pull your knife out and make sure it's got a good fresh edge on it. Always important to have a sharp knife whenever you're really working with anything. Um, a dull knife makes you have more pressure. Uh, you got a better chance to slip and cut yourself. So when you start off with the bass, we first pick up this pectoral fin and I make a nice shallow cut just behind it. You don't want to go all the way through the fish. You end up punct puncturing the stomach and making, making a bit more of a mess and a, and a less tasty fillet. So once you're just, just beneath the skin there, you'll then go down just behind these pelvic fins. just about to the middle of the belly. From there, you're gonna cut down and meet the vent of that fish. Now from here, we can save ourselves a lot of time. I'm kind of pinching the, the belly up there a little bit to give myself some working room. And then just in front of this anal fin, I'm gonna place my blade and kind of continue up along the edge. From here, we can then kind of just feel along with the point of your knife. You don't wanna push against a bunch of pressure, that means you're hitting bone. If you're just easing up just along the backbone, right through the meat, you'll pop out here nice and even with, with the fin here at the top, from the anal fin all the way to the soft dorsal fin on the back. Now from here, with a little bit of downward pressure, I'm pushing down on the knife a little bit, but not really hard to cut through. I'm just feeling for the backbone. So here I'm stuck, and I'm raising the knife a little bit just to get over the vertebrae. And I'm continuing all the way to the back of the tail. You don't want to cut all, all the way through the tail. I'll show you a reason why later it makes it a whole lot easier to skin. So I'm stopping just before I cut the tail. So I'm ending up with a little bit of a gap there. From here, I'll remove the knife. I flip the fish around and go back to where I started, right near that shallow cut behind the pec fin. Now the angle I'm going to take is right here behind the gill plate and kind of back up towards the base of the head. There's a lot of meat here behind the shoulders. If you just cut straight here, you're missing a whole entire triangle of meat that you'd otherwise have. And if you're flaying a lot of fish, that ends up a lot in the end. So I kind of make a little bit of a a little bit of a, a curve back up behind the head to, to get as much meat as possible. And again, you're not putting a bunch of pressure here. You're just holding enough and skip skimming along the backbone to the top, to the, to the middle of the back. From here, you want to make an incision 
and just slowly come down the backbone, not pushing down, because you'll come through to the other side to the other fillet, and you'll end up with bones in the meat. And I'm only I'm only in this fillet about this far, just to where this lateral line is. That's kind of my guide point. I'm just slowly easing along, loosening that meat up from the spine. And here you see I've gone back to where I ended with the soft dorsal fin before. From here, I peel the meat up, and right here I'm facing the rib cage. Right below this lateral line is where the rib cage starts. It's kind of an outline outside guide for you as you're filleting. So right here is the rib cage. If I would cut through that, I'm going to get a lot of bones in the meat. And there's also some all the smaller intermuscular bones that we mentioned pointing out towards the meat that way. A lot of times when you have a bony fillet, that's what you're chewing on is what's known as these intermuscular bones. So I'll actually cut back out towards the fish's skin and it looks like I'm cutting into the meat a whole lot, but I'm actually not. I'm missing all of these intermuscular bones. I then turn the knife back in and make almost a wedge right here. This is where all these intermuscular bones are that give you that bony fillet that so many folks talk about. From here, I come back down to the rib cage. I've met the main ribs again. And I'm just slowly easing past the ribs until I reach the belly, the belly cavity again, the body cavity. And here is essentially my bone-free fillet. This ridge right here is what's so important to leave these muscular bones. From here, here's the reason why we didn't cut all the way through the tail. I'm now going to skin these bass fillets. Bass don't have incredibly tasty skin, at least in my opinion, to where most folks like to have them skin-free. So I'll slowly and easily cut down. I don't want to cut all the way through the skins and scales. I want that here to help me skin the, skin the rest of this fillet. From here, I just apply a, a little bit of slight downward pressure just slowly pushing and slowly cutting through. And what I end up with is a nice, clean bass fillet. You can see there's very little waste on this skin and very little waste here on the primary skeletal system. I've left the intermuscular bones, I've left the rib bones, and we've got a completely bone-free fillet. And sometimes you're gonna miss them, but you can run your finger through here and you can feel for the pricks sticking out. And if you do, you can reach in here and just pull them out. You can have some needle nose and pull those bones out. I honestly don't feel any there, so we've got a nice clean fillet. We'll put it in our clean bowl and we'll move to the other side.